My guest tonight is Ian Bailey. The most economical way to heat your home in an environmentally friendly way, choose a Boru stove. You are all very welcome back to All That Matters. My guest tonight is a Manchester man by birth who has taken up residence in West Cork, I don't know how many years ago, well-known journalist, author, and I think he's a couple more strings to his bow um, in other areas as well. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you Ian Bailey. Good evening and welcome to All That Matters. Well, good evening. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it was actually 30 years ago last week that I uh, left the decomposing nation and, you know, came to Ireland to live. So, uh, yeah. Well, well welcome, to the, welcome to Club Ireland. Ian Bailey, you're very welcome to All That Matters. So, Ian, listen, can you tell me about your life growing up in Manchester in the United Kingdom? Well, I was born in St. Mary's Hospital on a cold night in January 1957. I grew up above my father's butcher shop in Stockport, Cheshire. And my earliest recollections were playing in sand pits and going to the zoo um, in Manchester and going to Oh the Flicks on a matinees. And I'm um, oh, going to Blackpool on holidays and making sandcastles. Yeah. So that would just try to do. Ian, like, so like, um, what did you say to this? Look, that was your childhood years, right? Your teenage years, like we well, say. Well, so, so yeah. you, 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 Eugene, just to explain it simply, and, and it's, you know, so when I was about six, I think my father moved away from Manchester. He sold his shop. He was a master butcher and finished up settling in a town called Gloucester in the, the West Country of England. And I went to junior school there and then qualified to go to a thing called grammar school. We had a thing called grammar school. Yeah. Um, and I was very sporty. I used to play football. My school played rugby, cricket, basketball. Um, and I had a good education. Good, a good, my parents were, and I must say, Ken, Ken, Kenneth, my father, and Brenda, my mother, Welsh mother, both are now, you know, reside in, in another realm. Um, and I was lucky. And I loved English. Um, I loved poetry. And I, I took to writing in English and um, easily, and then subsequently I, I became, I followed the path of a journalist. But I was always poetic. Oh, Ian, I'm glad you actually said that to me, you know, because I was actually going to lead, lead on to that. From um, the poetic point of view, and we'll move on to journalism shortly afterwards, was there any people in your life who influenced your writing in respect to poetry? Well, I, th I think the, the answer to that is that my, my father taught me how to read and my mother taught me how to write and my father would read to me and he gave me a poem when I, I don't know how old I was, maybe six or seven. And it wasn't a nursery rhyme. It was a poem called If by Rudyard Kipling, um, which begins, if you can lose, keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. It's a great poem. And I think that's what, that's, that was the first real poem that I can recall. After... Mary had a little lamb, you know, and this other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I want to say to know Ian is at this point is, um, okay, right. You then took the steps, as you say, into journalism in college, right? Uh, yeah. So I, I, I did grammar school and I, I, I was indentured into journalism as a freelance with an agency in Gloucester at the age of, I think, 18, thereabouts. No. So, Ian, look, what I would really like to get into here is, right, and it's what, it's the topic, like, look, I always ask everybody, was there people, quotations, songs, or anything particular that influenced your particular path in life? Well, I think, I think that poem, if, really, probably, you know, it stood me in good ground. I find it's a, it's a piece of advice to a father to a son. And really, I mean, if anybody doesn't know that poem, they should read it. And it's it's very good advice. You know, like so I think that was that that was. The, and then my grandmother used to sing hymns, and that's why I finished up being a, like singing choirs. And I was a choir boy, and I still am. You know, like pop up choirs, pop up. My grand Welsh grandmother used to sing the Welsh national anthem 
uh, in Welsh to me. Uh, I can't, I wouldn't even attempt it because even the Welsh can't under understand what the Welsh means. But um, so I, I was into singing and then I went to a school, the Crip School in Gloucester, and I was in the choir there and we, I sang in cathedrals. And then I, I sang in what they call the treble, you know, the young male. But then, of course, after, you know, puberty kicks in, you finish up singing lower and lower. Right? There to your influences. You said that home, if, was quite a big influence on your life going forward. Well, you know, it was a mantra going forward, as we might call it. Yeah. Yeah, and then, right, okay. So, at that point, you said, right, your path into journalism, right? Mm -hmm. I think somebody's going to read me a piece of poetry here, are they? No, 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 it's okay. I was, anyway, go on. Yeah. Well, there was a natural link between being good at English and writing and poetry and, and journalism. You know, to me, at that time, it seemed fairly, you know. Yeah. So I became, no. you know, a journalist. Right. Finally, Ian, on that topic and going, sticking with writing, right? As mm -hmm. you say yourself, you have wrote, is it two books or one book? I don't know what's in my notes. Is it? Well, I've got two, two books. books, two collections of poetry, uh, The West Court Way and a second collection called A John Wayne State of Mind. I published a my legal master's legal thesis from UCC on police accountability in Ireland on Amazon. And I'm working on other projects and, you know, yeah. Right. Going back to that question about... Uh, your first book and poetry. Ian, right, is there any chance you could recite, recite or off your top of your head, actually? At least yeah, sure, sure. From that. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a performance poet. I'm, I've got a one-man show. I've got, I brought it out a new DVD, by the way, which is available. Um, so I'll give you a poem that I wrote that I thought I, I went through all my stuff papers and i came across one i'd forgotten i'd written it's called the representative well i give you that right. it's short and sweet brilliant okay it's like... and it's a, there's a salutary message in this not to be taken too seriously so we elected johnny from the bog the other day yeah a thousand country cousins at the ballot box held sway yeah now you see johnny is our kith and kin though he never really worked a day at all so the only chance we had for him was to elect him to the Doyle. We took a lovely photograph and we bought a megaphone and we printed on every poster, Johnny proclaims Pogue Mahone. The electorate was amazed at this cultural decree for they'd not heard the Gaelic youths and sat upon their grandma's knee. So guess what? They voted in our Johnny with a grand majority. The moral of the story is, do not mock democracy. Do not mock democracy. Shin Shin. That is very good. No, I, know. I just had to get something It's out. got nothing to do with that. It's nothing I'll just say to this do with any local politics. I, as a lawyer, I, I, it's got nothing to do with the Healy Rays. <laughs> Rolling on, right. Looking at your, as you said, you wrote another book about police accountability in Ireland. Now, that is for another show, mm -hmm. okay? Right, we can look at that book in mm -hmm. detail in another show. But outside of that, Ian, mm -hmm. look, um, is there any pieces of journalism that you are actually proud of or any particular news group you've wrote for that you're particularly proud, proud of that piece? Well, I, I was I was part of what they called the Sunday Times Insight team back in the day, back in the 80s, uh, which was an investigative unit of the Sunday Times. And I think I was very proud of the, the work I did there. And that was to do with a an organization called GCHQ, the Government Communications Headquarters in Cheltenham, Gloucestershire, where I lived. And there was a, a big spying scandal. And uh, I, did, I broke a lot of, I, I, my speciality was breaking stories that people did not want to come out into the public. Well, thank you for that. Now, that's a great inspiration into a guy. So, Ian, you decided after so many years, or oh, we just say up to 30 years ago, Ian, you decided to t take from the west coast of the United Kingdom 
to the west coast of Ireland, down to the Singing Republic of yeah. Cork. So you went from, we say, a red devil to a rebel. Would that be a, a, a good way of putting it? <laughs> yeah, I hadn't made that connection, but yes, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. well, Manchester United have been the red devils, and of course, you've Ab been abs the rebel. Absolutely, yeah. And I've always, when, when, when I analyse my own character, I've, I've always been an anti-establishmentarian, cursed, questioning, rebellious well, lone wolf. So, in other <laughs> words, if you found your country base. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you found your country base. And one, of, and one of my, amongst my many big heroes and influences, were, well, Muhammad Ali was one of my early ones. George Best was another one. But latterly, um, and more, you know, recently in my later life, M Michael Collins became a great inspirational force for me, and still is to this day. Oh. And of course, since we have brought up that topic, and about inspirational people, and those are the people who are gone ahead of us. So in, as I say to every guest that comes on this show, a time will come in our lives when we will pass on to another place, right? Mm -hmm. And as we yeah. are outside of our nearest and dearest, is there any particular person or personality you would make, make a beeline to when you get the nod from the bouncer at the gates, St. Peter? Mine in well, I mean, assuming that I'm going upstairs and not downstairs, um, I think the first thing I'd do would be to get St. Peter's Clearance to organise a little uh, crack agus kill and a session. And I, I'd invite various musicians along. I'd invite my mother and father along, of course, and my grandma, Welsh grandmother. And I'd invite, uh, oh, Rory Gallagher, I guess, um, um, uh, Leonard Cohen, John Prine, um, Petty, and if, if, if I, 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 first people I'd want to see would be my mother and father, Ken and Brenda, and my Welsh ancestry, uh, uh, grandmother Annie. And then I, what I do is I get St. Peter's permission to organize a little session. People who are up there, like Liam O'Flynn, like Paddy Maloney, uh, John Lennon, like George Harrison, Rory Gallagher, Jimi Hendrix, even maybe to come, and Carolyn with his harp and various other people to come along and have a session. And I, I'd be the Faraday from that night. And we'd have grand right. I can tell you. Yeah, see, we've, you'd invite Hendrix anyway, Rory Gallagher, that is a good pick of clients. Now, Ian. Well, they, they always said about, the question that was asked of, of um, uh, Jimi Hendrix often was, what, what's it like to be the best guitarist in the world, Mr. Hendrix? And his response was, well, go and ask Sir Rory. You know. I actually heard that actually on um, one of the Cork radio stations. I don't know which one it was, but somebody came up came with that point. He asked Hendrix, and Hendrix turned over and said, Ask Rory Gallagher. Ask Rory Gallagher. I thought it was very well said. Right. Yeah. So I'd like to thank Ian Bailey, Ian Kenneth Bailey, for an insight into his life. And the reason he decided to go from being the Red Devil to the Rebel and head down to the west coast of Cork and write about that part of the wild Atlantic Way. Ian Bailey, it's been an honour and a privilege to have you as my guest on All That Matters. Good night, God bless, and remember, Gur let's be careful out there. Iowa, uh, uh, and remember this. Is Federlin. Gormina Mahagod. And remember, Ian, let's be careful out there. The most economical way to heat your home in an environmentally friendly way, choose a Boru stove.